Hello, it's Mr Lee. Welcome to our virtual new intake evening. It is the 14th of July 2020. Um, lovely to see you all virtually, obviously. And this is going out uh, as live on our YouTube channels and a recording will be made and also we'll post it on our, our Facebook channels. Right, just a welcome uh, from us all. Who, who's going to be here today and speaking, obviously, myself. I, I'm going to speak for a little bit. I'm going to hand over to uh, several of my colleagues, uh, Miss Cox, my vice principal, Mrs. Fogarty, my assistant vice principal, uh, our new PLD, Miss Binsley, uh, who is going to be head of year seven, the PLD for year seven, and our Senko, Mrs. Moore. Delighted uh, to welcome all of my colleagues. I feel a bit like Charlie's Angels here. Um, first bit really to update everyone on is the uh, the, the, the building. Uh, and that is going really well at the moment. Uh, if you live in the lo locality, you'll see the fine uh, structural work that Wilmot Dixon uh, are, are taking part in. We've actually got steel on the outside bit. So I can see where my arrow is pointing now. The steel uh, is just been erected on this side of the building. Uh, and that is going to take place all over the summer holiday. And as you can see from the plans here, this, this will mean that come September 21, we'll have our 400 seat performance theatre. We have all our performing arts block. And Mrs. Meredith and the team delighted about that. We extend our dining area, such an important part of Q3 Academy Langley. And we have our new multi-use sports area uh, indoors as well. Uh, on to the second floor, we have our specialist art rooms. At the moment, we've only got one art room with uh, Mrs. Barlow. Uh, we're now going to have two, including a kill. Delighted about that. We have our, our SEN function as well. And again, delighted uh, with the facilities that are coming down the line for that. And finally, our third floor, Mr. Anderson, uh, our Associate Vice Principal for Science. Uh, absolutely delighted to report our increasing science capacity, mainly up on the third floor. So the building is all going to plan. That's great news for everyone. Uh, we're thrilled and uh, Wilmot Dixon have been fantastic as well uh, throughout, throughout this period and we can't wait uh, to see the gains being made over the summer holiday. Well, of course, we're doing this online because normally we, we'd have the hall uh, open, the cuisine open, and we'd have five rolling presentations and you'd get to meet your tutors and, and we'd see you all in the flesh. But obviously due to this uh COVID-19 situation uh, we're having to do this online but we can't wait to September and hope things get back to a degree of normality and um, obviously lots in the news at the moment we heard the other week from uh, Secretary of State Gavin Williamson uh talking about uh schools going back in September whole year group bubbles drop GCSEs and all this uh, kind of detail that's going on. We're still a very long way from obviously the beginning of September and things may well change um, as we go through uh, August, as we hit the summer holidays, as we as we head into September. Uh, but uh, one of the things to kind of say is obviously the, the, the main message, and again, there's a letter been posted by Chris Ward, the Director of Ed Education for Samwell. We put that on our website this week, that every school is to return in September. Obviously, secondary schools are to have whole year bubbles. At the moment, my own children are, are back in school and they're in kind of class bubbles, but uh, they have said, the government, the Department of Education, from September, secondary schools will have whole year bubbles. And that's actually very interesting because that is actually how we have operated since we opened in 2016. And in fact, a lot of the things that schools are going to plan for up and down the country, both locally and nationally, are actually going to replicate a lot of the practices that we've had. We often talk about our fantastic attendance here at the Academy. And perhaps one of the reasons for that is because we have kept students in whole year group bubbles. Staggered start times. Well, we have that here at Q3 Academy Langley. We, we've always had staggered start times. And actually, we have an eight o'clock start for Key Stage 3 and we have an 8.30 start uh, for Key Stage 4 with a three o'clock and a half past three respective finish. And actually this year as well, we're going to stagger that even further because year 11 on a couple of days are going to be finishing at four o'clock. Uh, pupils forced to face the front due to risk of infection. Um, well, you know, majority of our classrooms are set up with rows. We believe that is the best way to teach. Uh, and, and although we do some pair work and occasionally some group work, we believe the most effective way of teaching is with the teacher at the front uh, and, and students facing the front, facing that teacher, so learning uh, can take place. Um, right, uh, we've talked about the year group bubbles. Um, I did read in one um, report or one uh, newspaper uh, article, I think it was, that um, schools were talking about doing 100 minute lessons. Well, we do that here at Q3 Academy Langley. One of the reasons we do that is we believe that is the best uh, format for delivering learning, uh, extended periods of time, but we also don't move around the building very often. 
And again, when we do move, when our students move from A to B, they move with managed transitions. And all our staff are out on the corridor. We move in effectively a one-way system. Uh, and that is something that, again, we are used to doing. And again, with only three lessons a day, it means we are minimising uh, movement. We have limited staff exposure to different teaching groups. When I became vice principal of our sister site at Great Bar, we worked out that our New Year 7 students had come in uh, from primary school that had one fantastic primary teacher and maybe someone would cover for a bit of PPA or, or for PE. Uh, and then suddenly we give them 16, 17, 18 different teachers, different learning consultants, as we call them. Well, here we generally have the same two teachers, learning consultants teach year seven maths, the same two learning consultants teach year seven English. Uh, and again, this is something that isn't different for us. This is something our staff team are used to. This is something we as a leadership team are used to doing. And that, again, limits the exposure to different adults and, and, and from, from a Charles' point of view means limited adult contact or, or less than you would find in a normal school. Lineups. Now, now you know, lots of evidence around the, uh, the virus is that it doesn't get passed in the open air. Well, we line up at the start of the day. And one of the reasons we do that is because we have a gradual entry into the building rather than kind of free for all with everyone rushing to get in. So, again, we will continue with our lineups at the start of the day. day we may well have to separate students out and year groups out a little bit further than we have done. Uh, normally, and we may have to use the back playground, but certainly our attention is to have year seven and year eight lining up uh, a quarter to eight in the morning, ready to start the day purposely and get on with the learning. Our independent learning, we don't hand in. So again, there's been concerns from teaching unions up and down the country uh, in relation to uh, work, work being handed back in from home. Well, all our independent learning is knowledge based uh, and is tested uh, in the classroom, sent, sent home by our class charts app and then tested in the classroom. So again, we don't need to worry about that. We don't have lockers here. That's why every student has a bag, uh, carries their own items. We don't have children hanging around lockers. We don't have to worry about cleaning of lockers and so forth. So again, we feel very secure in a lot of what we're doing uh, at this time. Our exercise books stay in the academy, a bit like in a primary school. So again, we haven't got that worry around the virus coming, being transmitted back uh, from home into different um, kind of classrooms and so forth. Our equipment, well, we don't share equipment here in the academy. Our students bring their equipment on a daily basis and we check it in. We have very basic classroom design. That, that's been very deliberate. There's an there's a interactive whiteboard at the front. There's two dry whiteboards for the learning consultant to write on um, and, and the desk face the front. Uh, there aren't a lot of displays or anything like that because we believe in, in the students should be focusing on the, the adult in the front of the room, the knowledgeable adult that is teaching. And um, we've always had our cleaning team, po our partners solo, uh, and they're on site every day. We've obviously increased their hours and we will have someone, at least one person, usually two minimum on site all throughout the day from 6 a.m. in the morning until 6 p.m., making sure uh, that we're keeping and re-sanitizing and extra cleaning goes on. Our, our kitchens itself have a five star um, cleanliness rating as well um again very very kind of proud of that and we can control that our reception at the front is fully as a kind of pod uh, with with uh, security glass in the front which means again our reception staff don't get exposed uh, and again parents and carers that come in and speak to our reception and ensure that they are following covid protocols uh, hand sanitizers are, are one of our partners supreme that does uh, towards our toileting facilities has installed uh, about 20 or 30 i think additional hand sanitizers around the building. Again, we've got the kind of 80% proof uh, hand sanitizer and that is available for everyone, every adult, every student in this academy um, to use on a daily basis. And again, we're really encouraging uh, staff and students to use that at all times. Again, got nothing against students bringing their own hand sanitizer as part of their equipment on a daily basis. Uh, mobile phone collection, yes, we do this. Uh, we may need to look at how we do this and the, the logistics and the rubrics of this. Uh, but again, you know, it's something that, that is part of our day, uh, something that's part of, a, of what makes us different at Langley. Playtime, um, we're looking around how we can use our site. Obviously, we are restricted due to the building, but we, we've got the multi-use games area. We've got the playground at the back. There will be a car park. We're considering possibly using the park or possibly uh, using the visitor's uh, car park. We may allow that for drop-off and collection, but then we might close that and then use that as a space. But what we are going to do is bubble the different year groups into separate spaces and um, family lunch again uh, we need to, to see what this looks like but uh, but you know we will continue with family lunch we may have to go down the hand washing route as well as the hand sanitizing route we did this in march and um, one of the things i will say though is that you know 
unlike most of the schools uh, in, in the country, and again, I've worked in 10, 11 different schools, visit hundreds of schools in my career, uh, we know where every single child sits at lunch because we have effectively a wedding plan for each year. So again, when we talk about minimising contact, but also about identifying should there be a case, an outbreak in September, then we can quickly and easily identify which child has come into contact with, with it, which other child. And again, I make no apology for family lunch. And we've actually seen an increase, obviously, as you would expect at this time of economic woe, with an increase in uptake of free school meals. One of the key things about family lunch is the fact that nobody here in the academy knows who is a free school meal child. And that, that again, was something when I was at school wasn't the case. We all knew who were the free school meal children because they all had to queue up and get a little pink ticket. That doesn't happen here. And, you know, we do not allow sandwiches. And one of the reasons for that is that we want that, that uh, degree of equality. And so, again, that is really important why we're going to do family lunch and we're going to carry on doing family lunch from, from September. Again, I've had lots of conversations and we've been doing a lot of work with our uh, catering partner, Sodexo, and uh, Mr. Parker, the lead for that in particular. And we've got a plan for the certainly the first a month back in September. Um, PE kit, I saw something online about wearing PE kit. Of course, our students do wear their PE kit on the days they do PE, uh, which means obviously we don't end up with all the issues that happen in school changing rooms. I'm sure we can all remember what those were like uh, back when I was at school, for instance. We are talking about potentially increasing this. So for year seven students, obviously they wear it on a Thursday. We're potentially looking, but again, we will confirm this near the time that the PE kit could also be worn on a Tuesday. So that would mean you have Monday in business dress, Tuesday in PE kit, Wednesday business dress, Thursday PE kit, and Friday in business dress, giving time to wash and giving time for the business dress the uniform to be hung up uh, and, and kind of clean. So that, that's where we're kind of heading. And I think I saw this from our, our friend Ros, Ros Mullen, great head teacher. She's retired now. Um, I think it's a very, very sensible kind of statement. I think we have to be honest about this. Secondary schools are fully open. There'll be no bubbles. Yeah, we're talking about a bubble of 240 in our case in our year group, 150 in our year 11. The best we're able to do is a whole new approach to movement procedures, hygiene, emphasis on behaviour routines and protecting our adults as best as we can. And I think I certainly subscribe to this and that, and that is what we intend to fully do at Q3 Langley. Just to remind everyone, in terms of actual uh, logistics, uh, obviously we've got the bank holidays a little bit later this year. I know it's normally a little bit earlier than this. That's on the 31st of August. We've got an inset day. And again, some schools will have two days. Uh, we've only gone for the one day, but, th but that is important because I've got several new colleagues who are joining us when we need to get through uh, how we're going to open up the school. But you can see in that first day, the 2nd of September, we're only having our year sevens in, okay, on that day. Just year sevens on their own. On the Thursday and the Friday, they're joined by our year 11s. They've lost enough time. We need to get them back in the building. But I think what I would say, these three days, the year sevens effectively are going to be on their own in the whole building by themselves. Uh, and that will give us a, our, our time to have that kind of normal transition week. For those of you who've got uh, siblings in other year groups, you will see the 7th of September. We're going to welcome back all of our year groups. Uh, and again, we will update you near the time uh, in terms of uh, the time they are coming in, the time we expect them to come in. Um, but again, you will notice there that, that that is also what we're classing as a zero week. We intend to spend a lot of time in tutor time, but towards the end of the week, gravitate back into normal lessons. But what we're not doing is putting that as part of our assessment cycle. And so, you know, the main priority is the safety uh, and the well-being of all of our students back into the academy. I suppose this is a bit now normally when I hold up the Marmite jar and I kind of say, you know, you've chosen Q3 Langley. We are a bit like Marmite. We are different. Uh, what I would say is, like I've repeated earlier, a lot of what we do is what a lot of schools around the country are going to do now. Now, we do it because we believe it's right and we believe it works. Um, but a lot of the procedures and practices, you know, we're very comfortable with here, here at the Academy that a lot of schools are going to adapt in a post-COVID world. Like I've always said, and if you've uh, attended my open days and the, the welcome evenings, you know, I've been incredibly blessed to be able to set up a school from scratch and to adopt policies and procedures uh, that, that we believe as a staff team are right and will maximise the learning opportunities for all, all students. And I think come September, you know, my, my good friend Sam Strickland again, has posted online that, you know, we need to look at obviously safeguarding and health safety at all. But basically, I want to get back to teaching. I want my staff to be back in the building. Uh, this week in July, we've got all of our staff back in. It's great. You know, we have simple rules. My senior leadership team are highly visible. Um, you know, we're not going to be testing millions of children when we come back. Um, and essentially, it's that last bit, teach, teach, teach. You know, we want to get back into normality because that is going to be a break for our students. That really is going to be a break uh, for our students and escape from the crisis and 
you know, the best way to get back into a routine is to have a routine. And, uh, you know, Sam, very wise colleague and friend, you know, it'll be a marathon, not a sprint. This autumn term is going to be really difficult, but together, um, you know, we are going to get through this. I'm I'm 100% confident in that. Um, obviously, just a reminder for everyone, uh, we had our officer report scenes an age ago. Um, but just to remind people about some of the findings of that, um, because this is the challenge for all of us here at Q Q3 Langley is to get back to what we were doing before COVID uh, kind of hit us, you know, a thriving, harmonious care and school community. Well, we've seen that in the past couple of weeks here. We've had our year 10s in once a week since June. We've had all of our 7s, 8s and 9s, unless they're shielding, have been in over the past two weeks. And it's been overwhelmingly positive. The relationship that we've had with, with our students has been fantastic and the support from families. And I want that to continue and it will continue in September. You know, we're not a normal school. A lot of you will have chosen us because we are different. We are different. You know, this is probably my favourite line. They believe that the school is different from a normal school. The parents said that. Our phenomenal pack group say that. Um, you know, I, I don't get up at our five in the morning to be a normal school. You know, I want the high standards of behaviour. You're joining an academy where communication is exceptionally regular, detailed and informative. Please, if you haven't done so, uh, like our Facebook page, please look out for the newsletter on a weekly basis. Please look at our website. Uh, you know, on a daily basis, on a weekly basis to make sure you're getting up to date. We've, you know, already we've had 200 of our data packs back, but we've had 50 odd still not returned from our new intake families. We need those data packs back so we can make contact with you. Um, you know, a culture where exemplary behaviour, consideration for others and positive attitudes are the norm. Well, I've seen that during lockdown from our key worker students that, that we've had in, the behaviour has been fantastic. And yet I'm hearing from colleagues uh, around the country that that isn't always the case. But our students have been phenomenal. And come September, uh, our New Year sevens, I know, are going to set that bar even higher. Um, personal development and welfare is outstanding. And this is why I am so confident that our students are going to return in September, whatever year group, whether that are our new intake students like who are watching this address or our year 10s, 9s, 8s, 11s, whatever, because we are going to go through this in a comprehensive, thoughtful and ambition program of personal development. That is the, you know, the area Austin grade is outstanding and the team will be working so hard on this to make the transition back in September so smooth. And again, you know, we're very proud. 902 applications for places here, 357 on first preference alone. The distance reduced down to 0 0.8 miles. Yes, we haven't got any Ofsted results, uh, sorry, any examination results. Yes, our Ofsted report was only at a, a, a good level. But I think, you know, this is telling you what families in the locality, what our current uh, intake uh, of students and families think about Q3 Langley. We're delighted to welcome all of our new families uh, to Q3. Um, this is a nice message I got from, a, again, a colleague uh, who visited us, actually visited us twice, and he, he came to us in February, just gone. Um, you know, really, this is somebody who has spent their, their career uh, training teachers up and down the country, uh, helped set up a school down in London, transformed another school uh, in Great Yarmouth, and then is now working in London, the most impressive school I've, I've ever seen. Um, you know, this is the kind of feedback um, that, you know, colleagues, professionals uh, are saying about our academy. And again, I'm so excited about our year sevens joining us. Uh, just a reminder, and I think Mrs Fogarty and Miss Binsley will talk about this a bit, bit later on, but our day is different. Our day is a three period day. Our day starts with tutor and, and breakfast. And again, we're going to be doing a socially distanced family breakfast, but that is important for seven and eight. Three lessons, playtime in the middle, lunch, uh, including playtime, and then a tutor to top and tail at the end of the day. A reminder on a Thursday, and this might be a Tuesday as well for the first half term, students in year seven will come in their PE kit. OK, just also have to tell everyone about retests as well. And that this will, this is always will become a bit of a shock at this stage. In the first couple of weeks of September, if if a child doesn't do doesn't do as well as we had hoped on their tests, in their uh, EBAC core subjects, then they have the opportunity to redo that on a Thursday. And that's 10 minutes roughly on each one. So again, don't, don't be surprised if your child is kept a little bit later on a Thursday. And that is all about maximizing their learning uh, at this stage. Um, we're gonna talk to you about class charts. We need you to download the class charts app. We can't give you the actual paperwork to log on yet. We will do that in the first week of September, but this is gonna be the gateway. This is the thing that goes on your phone and means that you now get an up-to-date, almost by the second, breakdown of how your child is doing during the academy day. And again, look at the, the, uh, the kind of pie chart on there. It is ridiculously positive. 
Uh, and that's what we want. We want our students to, to be brimming with pride and to be celebrated all the great things they're going to do in lessons as they start secondary school. But again, any problems with that, contact the Academy, but make sure you've downloaded the Class Charts app. We always get asked this question at this at this kind of time. We, we need equipment um, to be bought. We need a spare pen. We need a purple pen. That's all the R&R &R pen is. We need a glue stick as well, sharp and eraser, a scientific calculator. Uh, we need a reading book. We need a ruler. All these things need to be checked in on a daily basis. Uh, and you need to make sure that your child is, is getting into the good habits of checking their bag uh, before they go to bed at night so they're not running around, rushing around in the morning looking for these items. Reminder around mobile phones, here's how we collect them in. Uh, you know, again, again, I know sometimes secondary school is the right of passage uh, for families in terms of them uh, being given a mobile phone to, to, to their child. We understand that. I, I personally would say get a brick phone, get one of the old Nokia phones with Snake. Uh, but if you are going to have a posh, expensive phone, then just a reminder, we don't have them out and about in the academy. And that's a you know, really strong part of our ethos and part of our rules. Very proud to be a phone free school. Um, again, just going to finally talk about family lunch. You know, I saw this newspaper headline. It, I thought it was so shocking the other day uh, around malnutrition. Um, our, our good friend Catherine uh, Babal Singh at uh, Michaela School uh, it was, is the inspiration for a lot of what we do here. And fam family lunch is one of the things. Um, but we do have a bit of a problem with debt. And, and again, um, what we moved to last year was parents have to pay for half a term in advance. Uh, and that depends on the number of days in school. Uh, but we have that payment. And we ask for that within the first week or two of uh, the half term. You again will receive a letter with that. And it's about 60 or 70 pounds, uh, sometimes a little bit more depending on the length, the length of the term. We ask that you pay that in advance. If your child is absent, we credit that back to the account. Um, but what we're not doing is chasing people on a daily basis. We never refuse students food, but ultimately I have bills to pay and I have to I have to pay our catering provider. And I thank parents for their support in this. I think I said at the one of the open evenings, everyone always views school via the individual lens of their own child. Whereas here we're looking at it from the wider picture. You know, family lunch is such an integral, important part of our day. And a huge thank you to those families that pay on time. If you are ever struggling or you've got multiple uh, children in the academy, then please contact us uh, because we can make arrangements to support you. But it's so important families don't get into debt and keep up, up with their payments. So I'm going to hand over now um, <coughs> to my colleague, uh, I believe uh, Mrs. Fogarty and Miss Binsley are going to be next. So I will see you uh, very, very soon. And just a huge welcome on behalf of myself, the Chair of Governors, Mr. Pope, uh, the sponsor, uh, and the rest of the staff team here. Thank you. Hello and welcome to the second instalment of this evening's transition videos. Today we are going to be talking to you about pastoral support within our academy. So I am Mrs Fogarty and I'm an assistant vice principal here at Q3 Langley and I lead on transition and then I also have Miss Binsley with me here today and she is going to be talking to you again about tutor time. Miss Binsley is our personalised learning director for Year 7. So just wanted to briefly introduce myself and obviously let you know about my role uh, this coming year. So um, as Mrs Fogarty said, my name is Miss Binsley. I'm the Personalised Learning Director, um, otherwise known as the Head of Year. Um, I'll be supporting these students, uh, monitoring their behaviour, monitoring their attendance and progress, um, and also obviously supporting with any mentoring or interventions which take place within Year 7 this year. Uh, we've also got Mr Foxall, who you can see on the screen. He is the PLC or the Personalised Learning Champion, um, so the Deputy Head of Year for Year 7 this year and he will also be supporting um, the pastoral team and helping to monitor um, these different aspects of your child's life here at the academy. Um, so I wanted to just talk to you about the layers of support which wrap around your child within the academy in terms of pastoral um, support this year. So we've got the child right at the centre and they're surrounded by a number of staff who are there to help them and support them with any of their um, worries or queries. Uh, we've got the tutor who they'll see in the morning and in the afternoon. We've got the student Student support champion and the academic ambassador who will be supporting them with different aspects of life um, which will be spoken about slightly later on in the presentation and then you've got myself the PLD and we've got Mr Foxall the PLC. Um, those layers of support are really there just to ensure that the child has someone that they can go and speak to um, and someone that they can answer their questions and obviously support them whether it's academically or emotionally um, on their journey with us here at Langley. 
In terms of the role of the tutor, it's primarily there to support the students and um, to check their progress, um, to ensure that they're obviously safe and well on a day to day basis. And it's the first port of contact um, for the students and the parents. Um, not only will they be monitoring attendance and progress, but also they're going to be there on a day to day basis to greet the students, to check any concerns and obviously to discuss day to day life here at the academy. OK, so I am now just going to discuss with you our overall aims of tutor time and what tutor time looks like within the academy day. So our overall aims then, it, the purpose of tutor time really is for registration, first of all. So we will do a register in the morning and in the afternoon. We ensure that students have a point of contact with their tutor at the start and the end of the day. And the idea being that if a child has an issue, that tutor is there then to either resolve that or pass that on to somebody that can resolve the issue for that child. We help students prepare for the day, which I will discuss a little bit later on. Uh, we track students' progress during tutor time, so across their subjects where they may need help and support, listening to um, sort of their child's worries maybe about subjects or where they're doing well in a particular subject. We also offer a supporting and nurturing environment within the tutor group and finally provide enrichment and social, moral, spiritual and cultural lessons um, to cover a lot of PSHE content. Tutor time then at the start of the day, students should arrive at the academy for 7.45am. During that time, they will line up and they will have an address from Mr Lee. And during that address, there are a number of important announcements that are delivered to students. So it is important that they are here bright and early and for 7.45am, so they miss none of those announcements. They will line up in their tutor groups with their companies. Now, there's no difference between the companies. We have five companies within the academy and within each of the five companies, there are two tutor groups, so 10 in total. And these are allocated randomly, so there is no difference between any of them. Students will then walk in silence to their tutor room. During tutor time, they will also have family breakfast if they're in year seven and eight. And this is for 10 minutes at a time and is on rotation. There will be 20 minutes of either Misconceptions Masterclass, which helps develop literacy skills, numeracy ninjas developing their math skills, or as I said previously, SMSC activities, which is our tutor time programme. And we cover a variety of topics within that programme. Student standards will also be checked. So this is their equipment and also their uniform. And Miss Cox will discuss this with you a little bit later on in the next instalment of the new intake evening two presentation. Tutor time at the end of the day then is really um, a time where students can reflect on their learning throughout the day and also resolve any outstanding issues. The tutors will also escort students to detentions if required. So if they had a detention for stages, maybe in lessons. And again, that'll be discussed a little bit later on when Ms. Cox talks to you about class charts. But also maybe if they had a standards detention, that will be done at the end of the day. Students can be kept for 15 minutes without um, contacting parents. However, anything after 15 minutes, parents will be contacted to ensure that it is OK for them to stay for that time. These detentions are usually manned by our student support champion, so our SSC as Miss Binsley mentioned earlier on. Essentially in the academy, tutor time is spent with your family. So we like to see our tutors and our, our tutor groups as small families within the academy. They're there to support you and to help you and to um, enable you to get through the academy day in a positive way. And although we have very high expectations and standards of our students here at Q3 Langley, we are absolutely here to also support and encourage students to be the best that they can be. So how could you potentially help um, at home with your children and help them with their transition? Um, students will be given a learning diary um, when they start with us at the academy. So that's not something that you, you have to purchase yourself. They will be given a learning diary. And this allows them to record their independent learning, and record their homework. So it's important that as a parent or a carer, you are checking this learning diary and ensuring that if your child needs any support with that independent learning, that that support is there and on offer. Support your child with their organisation. So uh, their standards, as I said, will be checked every morning. Their equipment and a list of that is provided in your data packs and will also be discussed in um, Ms Cox's presentation. But as that is checked every morning, we need to ensure that children have that with them. Now, it is their responsibility, but maybe a reminder every evening would be really positive. If you could help your child with their independent learning, as we mentioned previously, Independent learning is usually set on a Monday and Tuesday and occasionally on a Wednesday, depending on the year group. And then depending on how well they do on that um, homework, they are then tested the following week. If they do really well, then that's brilliant and they will get cue points for that. But if maybe they didn't do as well as they should, they may have something called um, a retest 
on a Thursday after school. And the idea behind this is to help strengthen their long term memory. So it's not seen as a punishment. It doesn't acquire any negative points on class charts. However, we do need your support with that um, because it, it essentially helps students then later on when they come to do their assessments in a week seven of a cycle. We need students to be reading the weekly newsletter with their parents so that they are aware of any events or anything that has gone on in the academy throughout the week. We also would encourage parents and carers to read with their children every night. So children should be reading for an hour every evening and they should be reading with a dictionary and with an adult to support them if they need any um, additional support, maybe with words that they find in the dictionary. We would also like that parents and carers are checking on the website and on class charts regularly for any updates, as um, we all know that students maybe aren't as reliable as they could be with letters, for example, but anything that does go out to students is on the website also, so please keep checking that regularly. Also, what I would say is if you have any issues at all, please let us know whether they're big, whether they're small. Your PLD, Miss Binsley, your PLC, Mr Foxall will always be there to help and will always be there to help resolve those issues for you. Finally, uh, just to note before uh, Miss Binsley and I hand over to Miss Cox, as an academy, we have created a number of transition videos to support you in your move from primary school to Q3 Langley. We appreciate that this year it is very different in that we have not been able to come to primary schools. We have not been able to see students. It was lovely to see some of you at the Sarsen event, but we appreciate that was not all 240 of you. And this is a very daunting time for you. So these videos are a way of you being able to get to know the academy and some of the procedures and some of the systems that we use so that when you do join us in September for your transition week you've got a little bit of a head start. Now these videos can be viewed on our school YouTube page so please feel free to take a look and you can watch them as many times as you like and if you do have any queries or questions please don't hesitate to get in touch with us here at the Academy. So thank you for listening and as we said if you do have any questions we will be happy to answer them so please either email the transition email or the reception email and they can pass those through to us. And now I'm going to hand over to Miss Cox. Miss Cox our Vice Principal, an integral member of the team, one of the startup members of the team and she's going to talk to you about behaviour in the pastoral system. So uh, a warm welcome, a huge thank you to Miss Cox. For those who don't know me, my name is Miss Cox. I'm Vice Principal in Charge Pastoral Safeguarding and SAN. Um, I'm delighted to be presenting to you this afternoon. Um, it's lovely to be able to uh, formally say hello to everybody out there. Um, I was really disappointed when we weren't able to come out to all your primary schools um, and speak to you also at intake evening, but hopefully you're finding this uh, presentation useful. Please keep asking questions if there are any additional things that we can help you with. Just um, the next kind of seven or eight minutes, I'm just going to go through our uniform. Um, Ms. Fogarty has already been through some key things, but I'm just going to go into a little bit more detail about that. Just before I do, let me just give you a quick recap on the history of our uniform. So our uniform actually dates back to around 10 years ago when our students at Great Bar designed this uniform. So uh, back then, we were just been taken over by the Academy's Trust and the sponsors wanted the uniform to come from the children. Uh, and so some children designed this uniform. So it really comes from the heart of the students and they really wear this with pride. What's the difference between um, this uniform and the uniform your um, children will wear is the pinstripe. So this is two pictures of um, our students wearing the uniform, but this is the old uniform with the pinstripe. You can't really see it from a far distance. And this will really look how your child's uniform will look with the navy. So our uniform is available at Uniform Plus. So uniformplus.co.uk, if you log on to that, there is um section on there for Q3 Langley. If you want to physically visit the store, it's at Great Bar. Uh, but what I would do is I'd phone beforehand and book yourself a slot. They are doing 30 minute uh, sessions just to talk to parents and also to size up uniform for our, our students. So if you do want to do that, please call or email them and they'll be happy to help. Uh, the uniform, um, like I say, has turned into just a navy and that's because we've made it a little bit more cost uh, efficient. Um, and as you can see, there's the two options which you can choose from. So there's the blazer and the skirt or blazer and trousers, both of them wearing white shirt, um, the cravat and then the tie uh, with that. The cravat and tie um, relate to different colours um, that you should um, have received a letter with um, relating to your company letter. So your company letter will say what group company that you're in. So if you're in art, 
that relate to you to you have a red um, tie or cravat if you're in communications that will be a yellow lifestyle is light blue discovery is dark blue and social design is green so please just make sure you remember which company you're in when you go and visit them or when you order online a few more clarifications uh, with um, the uniform tights should be uh, navy or black um, and also socks if you're wearing socks with your um, trousers they should also be navy and black we do um, issue uh, points um, and standards if those aren't um, the correct colour in terms of our uh, shoes because I know a lot of people ask about the appropriate footwear that must be black and polishable um, if you are concerned that you're buying some shoes um, and they don't seem to fit in with the academy policy, which is black and polished or, and things that don't look like trainers, please take a picture of them and send it into the academy. Some parents have done that before and then we've just checked over it before they make the decision to buy these shoes. What I would say is if it does look like trainers, we're probably going to say a no to it. So if you're coming in our and thinking, does it look like a trainer, then we're probably going to say the same thing and say no. So please just buy black polishable shoes, uh, smart, uh, and there's some pictures on the screen of the ones that we would say are very much um, the ones that we say that fit into our um, academy policy. Just going back to our business dress, um, skirts must be past the knee, uh, and that's must, how they must be worn. Uh, and any item of the business dress that isn't worn, um, that is forgotten on that day, you'll get a the, um, you get a five minute detention, a maximum of 30 minutes for the incorrect uh, wear of business dress. With the um, other things on the picture there, so the lanyard and also their pin badge, that is something that we will issue to them on the first kind of couple of days uh, of their time here in the academy. And again, they must remember that every single morning. You might see that they've got some reward badges on there uh, and other badges that they can then um, collect as they go into different year groups. Jewellery, no jewellery is permitted in the academy apart from a couple of exceptions. So we do allow um, earrings, but they have to be in both ears and they must be um, around three millimetres um, of width. No stones, they must be plain, plain gold or silver. Headbands are fine, so if you want to wear a headband, but that must be thin and it must be black or navy. Um, and again, it does say within the Academy policy that um, Mr Lee has got the ultimate say on um, you know, hairstyles, um, and so if there is any outrageous hairstyles, we will um, then take action upon that. In terms of any other jewellery, if you have kind of religious item that you need to wear, um, then obviously that, that is acceptable to do that. Children just need to let us know. In terms of our outerwear, uh, children need to log on to um, the Macron store. So that's macronstorewestmidlands.com and they can purchase our bag and our coat. And these are the only bags and coats that are permitted within the academy. So please um, don't send your child with any other bags but these bags. So this is the bag that is permitted um, at the moment that's on the website. And these are the coats that they've got on um, sale. Um, and again, these are something that you can purchase and they'll last them, you know, a number of years. The, some of them are waterproof um, and they come in different, uh, like I say, sizes and styles. So you'd be able to choose that, whatever appropriate for your uh, child. Also, the PE kits can be found on the Macron website. And again, that PE kit needs to be purchased and then it needs to be worn on days where they have PE. So for year seven, that will be Thursday. And again, standards will be issued if the correct PE kit is not, um, is not worn, including PE socks need to be, um, need to be worn on those days. Uh, trainers, they can wear um, any trainers that they wish to, but we do um, encourage parents not to go out and buy really expensive trainers because um, they're going to be um, something that's been worn every week and it may be that they're, they're on the field, they may get muddy. So we do, you know, say, please just be careful which trainers they are wearing because they might uh, get worn quite quickly and also muddy while out on the field. Students are allowed to wear their base layers um, for PE. So, for example, if it's um, a colder day, uh, I know some of the students like to wear those underneath their um shorts that's no problem just make sure that those are um black or they're dark blue 
just to fit in with the academy um, colours. Just quickly, um, Mr Croom's not available at the moment to talk about class charts, but he's asked me just to speak about class charts and, and why we use it. Class charts is our online system where we track uh, behaviour, but also our cue points, which is our points that children get in lesson um, if they've done something um, that the learning consultant feels they need to issue a cue point for or it might be out in the corridor, so it could be for excellent work, excellent conduct around the academy, for abiding by the academy ethos. And all of those are logged on class charts and the teacher has access to that all the time on their tablets and also on their laptops. And you will get a login for class charts uh, that you can um, then download the app um, onto your phone or device at home where you can constantly monitor your child's um, behaviour as well as their kind of key points and what we ask is that parents engage within this they support this and we've got nearly 100% of our parents on this at the moment and what they do is they check this regularly and then they support anything um, that is logged on there for us so for example if your child's achieving a few points and lots of those cue points, it's sometimes our parents reward their children at home and vice versa. If students are getting stages within lessons and if there is other things that are logged on there, like their standards, which will be, they will also have the appropriate conversations and maybe sanctions at home. So what um, you'll do is you'll receive a login for that in September that you can log on um, and make sure that you are monitoring that, you know, daily to have those conversations with your child. Last thing, if there are any more questions, our um, email address for transition is transition at qsvlangley.org.uk. Miss Fogarty and I have um, the emails for those. So if you do want to email us, you can. And um, over the summer, if you could just give us a few more days to reply, we will still be checking those, but not as frequently as if we were at um, school, but we're still on those emails. So if you do want to email us, transition at qsvlangley.org.uk. Thank you. And now I'm going to finally hand over to uh, our fabulous Senko, Mrs Moore. Mrs Moore is going to talk about provision uh, for those families and that those children who, who, who have special educational needs. So thank you, Mrs Moore. Good afternoon. My name is Mrs Moore and I'm a Senko here at Q3 Langley. Um, over the next kind of five minutes, I'm just going to discuss what our SEND department is, um, what we offer here to our students as well as yourself as parents. Um, just to explain who's within our SEND department, so we obviously have myself who is a SENCO. We've got Dr Mackay who will be joining us as Assistant SENCO from September. And then our LSAs, we have nine wonderful LSAs who all bring something different to the department. And um, they do work very closely with our students. They deliver lots of interventions and they are a, a really important jigsaw piece of our SEND department. Um, so as mentioned, I am going to just spend the next five minutes discussing what we offer here for our students. So a part of my role is to assess, plan and review the additional provision that we put into place. We do have a growing number of needs within the academy and I believe we truly offer something unique and we offer the, the best support, the most appropriate support to help our students succeed. The key principle we carry within the department is to ensure that no child is left behind and every opportunity that is available is accessible. As a team, we feel it is really important to make good relationships with not only our students, but also yourselves as family members and parents. We like to ensure that the lines of communication are always left open should there be support that's ever required. If there is a need that one of our students um, presents within the academy, we take the appropriate measures and actions. So for example, we will contact yourselves and we will speak with yourselves before we make any external referrals. We will put appropriate provision in place within the classrooms to help support your child and ensure that their needs are being met. And the type of support that we offer in the academy can vary and depending on the student's needs. A number of our interventions often run in the morning during tutor time. And these are primarily based around um, their academic lessons. So for example, our English interventions run from being in regards to phonics to help um, with spellings and to help with um, reading comprehension. Our maths, we do a lot of work around mental arithmetic to gain more confidence and skill around this. And we also offer non-core subject support, which is all about our pre-teaching to ensure that our students are equipped with information prior to going into a lesson. 
In addition to this, we also offer several social and emotional programs to help support students who may feel anxious or lack confidence in creating secure, safe and happy social relationships. We do also run a small nurture group provision, which is called ACE, and this runs from year seven to year nine. This is for students who may need additional support to access the curriculum. Within ACE, all of our learning consultants are primary school trained and they have successfully adapted the core curriculum to meet the needs of students to ensure it is accessible. Within this group, we do aim to reintegrate them back into core with the appropriate support, but this is done at the right time and we ensure that the support that's provided through that transition is, is there. We ensure that all information is shared to the relevant team members and learning consultants so that they're aware of how to support your child. Any issues that may arise, we would speak to yourselves and take the appropriate conversations, but we also do like to share really positive news. So please be aware that you may get a phone call at the end of the week, letting you know how well that your child has succeeded. Um, I would also like to put out there, we do appreciate that every student's needs are different, but we do adhere to our policies and expect our students to follow academy procedures as all other students do. We, rec we recognise that for some students initially this may be really hard to understand our structures and to understand our routine as we are a very different school. But these routines and structures will be learnt and we do have an amazing you know, staff um, support team, um, experienced staff members that are able to help them to follow the structure of the academy. I would just like to reassure you that as a SEND department, we're all here for our students and we follow this motto here, nothing is impossible. You know, we, we expect our students to strive for the best and we will always be there to support them to do so. Um, we are here for all of our students. We offer a very supportive role. We appreciate that the transition may not have run as smoothly as we would have hoped. However, we're looking forward to our students joining us in September and we'll offer the appropriate support and intervention where needed. To finish, I would like to just leave my contact details on here. Should anyone have any specific SEN related questions, please do not hesitate to contact me and I look forward to meeting with you all very soon. Thank you. Great. Well, that kind of wraps things up. Unfortunately, we couldn't do this live due to technical issues. Um, so thank you for the comments on the YouTube page and obviously Facebook. We will get back and answer as many questions uh, as we can. What I would say, please engage with us. Please like our Facebook page. I run the Facebook page personally. Uh, I will always respond to questions over, over the kind of holiday period as well. If you've got any burning questions, please ask us. Uh, please get in touch. And just on behalf of my colleagues, Ms. Cox, Mrs. Fogarty, Ms. Binsley and Mrs. Moore and all the staff team here, really sorry we couldn't do this in person, but we can't wait until uh, all the students return and, and, and we're back in September. A reminder, uh, quarter to eight on uh, Wednesday, the 2nd of September is when we will see our wonderful new intake of year seven and we can't wait to meet you all. Thank